Hi, I'm Paul. I'm Head of Personal Training at Future Fit, and today we're joined by Martin Southwick, Director and Founder of ISYT Fifth Element, an accountancy firm that specialises in working with fitness professionals. So Martin's got over 200 PT clients at the moment, so he knows a thing or two about tax and financial planning and business planning for fitness professionals, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. So there's three or four common questions that a lot of personal trainers ask Martin when they first start out. So we're going to pass those to Martin, get some advice, get some tips that will hopefully help you starting out in your career. So Martin, um, most personal trainers are self-employed at yeah. the moment. Uh, how do you go about becoming self-employed as a PT? Well, first of all, I think a common problem that people, when they start working for themselves, get into is they think, right, I'm going to do this business, so I need to register now as self-employed and then try and work out the way through the bureaucracy of HMRC and what they need to do. Um, the first thing to remember is you don't need to register self-employed at first if, one, you're not trading at all, you've got no clients, you're just building up the business. Um, but secondly, if you've got one client and it's once a month and it's a low level of income, you still don't need, it's still classed as casual earnings. If you start getting regular clients on a regular basis with the income streaming through, that is a point you need to think about registering self-employed with HMRC. Um, you have three months from the date of trading um, to do this. So it's, again, it's not an urgent thing, but you've got three months to do that. So that at that point is when you need to contact HMRC. Um, easier to do online and inform them that you are now self-employed and they will then write to you with a self-assessment reference number, which is the equivalent of a tax national insurance number. It stays with you for life. Um, with the need to complete a tax return every 12 months. Okay, so okay, that kind of addresses a common misconception then that you have, you have to start becoming self-employed or register as soon as you start trading. It's actually not, not the case. That is, because a lot of people will say, right, oh, I've got a client, so now I need to register self-employed. So they get put in the tax system, they've got to do a tax return, they've done one training session or a month with someone, they could have earned £200, They've got to complete a tax return for that. They may then forget to do it and they're getting hit with penalties. We see it all the time when people have registered. When they didn't need to, they come to us and nothing's been filed and they've suddenly got £900 of tax penalties when they needn't have registered in the first place. So another common question that PTs have is, should they be self-employed or should they set up as a limited company? Yeah, that does come up often when speaking to people when they're first going into the fitness industry and they say, oh, well, I've looked at Companies House, the company's name I want is available, should I register and become a company? The answer in the first instance is always no, um, because you, at the beginning you're going to be small and there's no tax advantages to being a company. Companies are a lot more regulated um, and it gives you a chance to develop your business skills beforehand and companies are a lot more expensive to, to function. Um, so start off self-employed, build the business up. What we always say is once your profit gets to a level of around 25,000, then there are tax advantages to becoming a company. Um, and that is the point. But at that point, always speak to an accountant. Um, the only time it would be worth registering as a company is if there's a commercial reason to do so, um, which could happen where you're working specifically with one supplier, one client, um, who require you to be a company for insurance purposes or the like we say well at that point it might not be tax beneficial but commercially it makes sense because otherwise you're going to lose this contract so if you need this contract for the business to develop then then your hand is forced but 99 times over 100 self-employed is your first port of call. I think it's a good example of why it's a good idea to work with an accountant and have regular contact with them because you wouldn't know whether that situation is going to arise unless you have that advice with you. That's right. And a lot of the times, some people, before they get to me, have already set up a company. And you just spend time on trying to unravel it all and get them actually registered self-employed mm. because they're costing themselves hundreds of pounds by being a company. And as I say, you, you would need a payroll scheme, you need admin. It's so much more regulated by HMRC and Companies House, where self-employed, you have more control over your income than you would if it's through a company. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so on to a very, very common question that a lot of PTs have. Do I need a business bank account? Yeah, this does come up all the time. If you're self-employed, there is no legal requirement for a business account um, because all the money earned through the self-employment is yours. 
can go through the personal account, that's fine. However, I always recommend getting a business bank account um, for two reasons. One, it protects you if HMRC decide to inquire into your affairs. They can, they can look at the business account and the business account alone. Um, and it keeps all your personal spend and, and your lifestyle separate because they can see it's all going through the business. That's all they're allowed to look at. Um, but the main reason is because it enables you to be able to look on a day in, day out basis of how well the business is performing. Because um, you'll see what's gone in, what's gone out. It's not getting lost in your personal bank account where everything else is going out. You can see it all within and you can see, well, we're performing well and now I can take some money for myself. Transfer that in your personal account by all means. That's absolutely fine. Make regular transfers. But it's best to keep it in there. You can see the business, the, as I say, the profitability, keep an eye on what tax you need to put aside and you'll usually get a savings account attached to your business account. So you can just transfer it into there to keep for any tax bill. And that keeps you on foot. And the, the weird... One that always comes up, and I've never found a way to properly explain this to clients, but if you keep your money in a business account rather than going through your personal account, you make more money. You're not frittering away money. It's not getting lost in amongst everything else. It stays as a business pot, and the business then becomes more profitable. You've got more idea day to day of how the business is performing, and it helps the business grow. Um, one other thing, if I can add to this, if that's what I put um and the follow-up question that I always get asked is, can I set up another personal current account as a business account? I was just going to ask that bit. Yeah. <laughs> um, you can, by all means. Um, however, if the bank becomes aware that your transactions are all business and you're using a personal account to do it, they do reserve the right. They can shut that bank account down there and then. Okay. And they do have teams of people looking at personal accounts and seeing what's going on within the account and they just shut them down. So as a, a final question then, how should you go about recording your expenditure and your income as a PT? Yeah, this is always a tricky one, um, but we're trying to move all clients along and HMRC are playing ball with this now as well. We're in a digital age, um, the revenue are wanting to make things all digital within the next couple of years anyway. So what we always suggest now is have your business bank account, put everything through that as as much as humanly possible that you can physically pay with that card, have it going through there. All your income comes in, it goes in there, even if cash is deposited, you get cash in hand with it, which of course you will, mm -hmm. um, in the industry you're in. But that gets deposited and then it comes out. Because what you've then built as well, beyond it just keeping a record of income and expenditures, it's the tale is there. You've got the whole story of, you can see that these are all business related expenses. Um, so if the revenue were ever to inquire, if, if you've lost the odd receipt, it doesn't matter. It, you can tell it, there's a, there'll be a pattern of gym rent, there'll be a pattern of equipment, there'll be coffees, etc. Et it, it tells its own story and that's our job anyway, mm -hmm. to explain the revenue. Um, you can't, obviously there's some expenses you can't use a card for. I mean, mileage is one for me, which I always say you need to keep separate because you don't put petrol through nine times out of ten is best to claim mileage. So you'd need to keep a log of what your mileage is because that's a legitimate expense. And the other one I always say is if I go to meet a client for a coffee, I'm not usually paying by card because it's £2.50. Mm -hmm. But I just, the way that works for me and works for a lot of my clients is they have an app on the phone um, where it's called Accounts Tracker but there's various ones similar where you just log it. So I can be, if I'm going to the car to log mileage, I'm typing it in, mileage, and where I'm going, who I'm meeting. I save it. The same with coffee. I go to a coffee shop. I've typed in who I'm meeting. And then as the hostess says how much it is, I type the amount in, phone's back in my pocket. And by doing them two methods of bank account and the app, you waste no time bookkeeping whatsoever at all as well. So you're not having to trade through receipts. It's all there. It's all logged digitally. They can be sent straight to the accountant and they've got all the figures they need for the year. So thank you, Martin, for coming in today. Hopefully you found that advice and the tips really, really useful. If you've got any further questions for Martin, contact him on the details below and we'll see you next time.